In this problem, our goal is to find the electric field that's located at distance z above the center of a square patch of uh, electric charge with a charge density of sigma. And um, one way we can attack this problem is that we can use a previous answer from, I think, I believe this is problem 2.4, where we found instead of a patch, it's a square loop here. So these are infinitely thin line segments. And uh, um, we can try to make those small and just integrate them, keep adding them up until we get to a, a full patch here. And the answer to the problem that we got in the previous problem, 2.4, where it's just that square loop, is equal to this over here. And a um, brief overview of, that, of this answer right here is that we found the electric field uh, from one of the sides and we extracted just the Z component. Um, because if we look at the, all the other components, they're going to be equal and opposite, except for the Z component, where the Z component is actually going to be uh, constructive. So we extracted the Z component, that's right, it's right here, and then we just multiply it by 4 for each side, and that's what this 4 is here. And so our goal, as you can see uh, right now, is to turn this um, sigma, or sorry, this lambda, which is the line charge density, into a... Um, <coughs> into a sigma, which is a uh, surface charge density right here. And there's going to be like some relationship that we have to multiply to, to change this over. And so uh, in order to do this, in order to turn this infinitely thin line charge segment into a um, infinitesimally small area charge is to just give these little line charge sig um, some thickness, right? And so one way to do that is just to, um, you know, give it a, an infinite thickness dA, right? And then this ends up not being correct because I'll just go ahead and just kind of draw it out right here, is if we do that and we do it to all four sides, you can see that we're missing uh, little square patches right here, right? And that ends up not being correct. One way that we can try to um, correct for this is just adding a little bit of patch right here, but that ends up not being correct either because... Uh, if we draw the line over here, there's going to be less uh, area over here than on this side because there's going to be an extra little square patch right here. So we want it to, um, we're getting closer, but we just want it to be um, symmetrical. One way that we can do that and ends up being the correct way is to, <clears throat> is to actually add a small amount of thickness um, right there. Let me just erase these. Um, with uh, this this uh, thickness right here ends up being um, dA over 2. This thickness ends up being dA over 2. So we're essentially just taking that patch I originally drawn, cutting it in half, and adding one of those sides over here. All right. And so with those thicknesses being um, dA over 2, that means that the thickness of this one right here is end up being um, the, the thickness of of this side right here, right, if I can draw it correctly, is that uh, ends up being a uh, um, dA over two. So um, just to draw it more explicitly, we'll just have a, uh, each one will have a line charge segment that has a uh, thickness, those, so these sides are equal to dA over two, and this total length is equal to um, dA over 2 plus A plus dA over 2, which is just equal to um, A plus uh, dA right here. So the thickness that we added is dA over 2, so that's exactly what we're going to multiply the sigma by, and that's how we're going to transform this sigma into, or transform this line charge density into an area charge density here. And since, like I said, um, we're, our goal is to do an integration, so we're going to integrate from uh, a equals zero, so infinitely small, basically zero, uh, all the way up to dA, right? So we're going to add a uh, an integration here. So I'm going to go ahead and move over here and just make this substitution for sigma and then add our um, integral sign over here. and our limits of integration go from zero to a, we'll just call it a prime. Now, we, instead of a sigma, we have a, or instead of a lambda, we have a sigma times dA over two, same substitution that we made for this right here. And uh, everything else stays the same.
Okay, and this is the Z component. So this is our DA for our um, integration right here. We'll go ahead and just uh, clean up some terms right now. So let's get this out. So this four cancels out with that four. Um, and then we can bring this two out on the next step here. Okay, so at this point, um, you know, kind of hard to tell, but um, one hint is that you can put it into Wolfram Alpha and it'll tell you, but our next step is to do a U substitution, uh, really trying to get this turned into the U right here. Um, so one way we can do that is just say that U is equal to that term I just circled, U is equal to A squared over 4, right? And that means that um, DU, so if we... Uh, take a uh, an a derivative derivative with respect to a that ends up being uh, This and then if we solve for our da to make that substitution our uh, Da is equal to 2 du solving for da Because mathematicians love that so we can go ahead and make those substitutions into this problem this expression right here I'll go ahead and move that Sigma out and forgot it the constant. Our limits of integration do change, so now we have a over 2 over 4. We have a z. Um, we made that substitution for da right here. Already can see plenty of stuff that we can uh, cancel out. Uh, 2 times U. Yep. And then there's a C hat. So let's go ahead and clean up some stuff here. And then this 2 can cancel out with this 2 over here. Okay. Alright, let's rewrite everything. We can pull that Z out that was uh, hiding out right here since that's just a constant compared to the DA in our world now. We have a pi over epsilon naught. And uh, we have du over top. So this is the whole goal that we're trying to get to, this, this integral right here. It's not a pretty one, but it's better than what we had before. Okay. And so again, there's a lot of different ways you could attack this integral. Uh, integral tables. Um, pure intelligence, but I prefer to use a uh, calculator because it's 2021 as of recording this integral or <laughs> recording this video. Um, so the indefinite integral for that right there is just a uh, two tangent to u plus what is it, z squared over uh, z and the square root and then all divided by z. Then a squared over 4, 0, and this is still a z hat. And we can just go ahead and cancel out these z's right here since they're uh, factorable out. Alright, so far so good. We're almost there. This is just math right now. We did the bulk of the physics already. And then, uh, let's see here. We can go ahead and pull that 2 out as well. So I'll go ahead and put this 2. And oops. And this is already looking promising, right? This is a very familiar um, factor that shows up a lot in electrodynamics, electrostatics. So we'll just go ahead and execute this uh, indefinite integral. Okay, minus tangent inverse of, um, 
I actually did skip a step, sorry. So it's really, I'll make it more explicit. And you know, these will end up canceling, that ends up being a two. Then tangent inverse of zero plus c squared over z square root. So it all ends up being a z hat component right there. So this all ends up being um, uh, square root of square root of z squared over z. So uh, that ends up, oops, sorry, that's not one big square root. Square root of z squared over z, and so this whole thing will just end up being one. Oops. Let's do a bracket because things are going to get a little bit um, more involved here. So we can refactor or just uh, start factoring other things out. Just divide by z for everything that's under this um, square root sign. Tangent inverse of uh, 1 is just equal to pi over 4. And uh, this is still the z component. Almost there for this first part. All right, now that we have this, um, we can do um, something kind of tricky. We can, I'll do it in, in orange. We can multiply by one in the form of this right here to everything. And you know what, I'm just gonna copy and paste it. I don't know if it's actually gonna be faster. That way we're able to distribute this over here and just turn that into uh, a one. That means this guy gets one of them as well. This is a Z. That was very sloppy. Let me redo that. So it was the square root. It's like all curvy. Minus one. All still under uh, the Z component right here. And then uh, what we arrived at is, um, actually we'll do one more. There's still plenty that we can cancel out here. All right. So now we have, uh, let's see here. Sigma over two epsilon naught. That's huge. That factor. That factor is extremely common in uh, electrostatics. So we definitely know we're probably pretty close to um, something that's useful. Minus one. All right. So this is our answer for the first part of the problem. This is the electric field uh, at a point z above the center of a square patch right here. And then uh, we're going to use this to, and we'll, we'll verify that this is actually correct because this isn't like a totally familiar form, although this hints at something really, really good. Uh, we'll use this problem with this form for the next part of the problem to verify it's in fact uh, correct.